everyone, it is Miss Kepley here, and today we're looking at the eight different types of parts of speech. So let's get started. First, what is a part of speech? A part of speech indicates how a word functions in meaning as well as grammatically within a sentence. Look at the purpose of the words in the sentence, because they're not just there, they have a purpose. There are eight parts of speech in the English language. And let's take a look at them. And you can go ahead and grab some pen and paper because we are going to be taking notes. Let's get started. First, we have the adjective. I love adjectives because they are describing words. They describe a noun or a pronoun. So if you want to call someone happy, sad, elated, joyful, these are all great describing words and they're adjectives. I love them. Let's look at our example. Elle's boyfriend broke up with her because she was blonde. Blonde being the adjective is describing her hair. If you like Legally Blonde, then you're going to love this presentation because that's all we're looking at with examples. Next, we have verbs. And verbs are the busiest words in a sentence because they're all about action and expressing action or being. And every sentence has a verb or every complete sentence has a verb. So they get a good workout. Let's look at our example. Elle decided she needed a new life plan, so she applied to law school. Decided and applied are the verbs in the sentence. It's our action words. But there are some little words that are verbs that don't quite look like it. These are called the be, have, do verbs. They're tiny. They're there. They don't really seem like they're an action word, but they are a state of being. So those are verbs as well. So even though they're tiny, they do have a role. Up next, adverb. It has that word verb in there because it's describing or modifying a verb, but also an adjective or other adverbs. And my tip is usually, usually not all the time because there's always exceptions, but usually adverbs end in L-Y. You're telling how you're doing the verb. So let's look at this. Elle's friends started to take her goals seriously. How are they doing it? They're taking it seriously. That's our adverb. And they threw her a lively celebration when she got into law school. So again, it's describing how we're doing the verb. They're taking her goals, what? Seriously. So we're describing it. They threw her what kind of celebration? Lively celebration. So we're describing the celebration. Therefore, it's an adverb. And as you can see, they end in L-Y. So that's another little indicator that we have an adverb there. Coming on up is our tried and true parts of speech that you have learned since kindergarten, the noun. And we know a noun is a person, place, thing, and maybe you know this other one, but it's also an idea. So an example of a person would be Elwood's place, Harvard University thing, law degree. Now, again, the idea might be new to some people. An idea I like to think of is something that can live inside of you. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I remember it in my mind. Like determination, happiness, joyfulness, friendship, hope. All of these things that you can have inside of you is a noun. I hope that makes sense, but that's just how I remember it. Next are nouns, little sister pronouns. And you can see it has the word noun in there. Pronouns, I like to think, are like stand-ins. They're a word used in the place of a noun. And our example here is Elle's ex-boyfriend cannot believe it when she got into Harvard Law School. So instead of saying Elle again, we took it out and we replaced it with she. So anytime you take out the noun and replace it with something, that something you replace it with is the pronoun. So you might have she, he, it, they, them, we. Again, any time that you don't use the noun, you use something else. That something else is the pronoun. Let's keep going. All right, this is a long word and a long definition. And it might be a little confusing, so let's break it down. A preposition is a word used to link our nouns, pronouns, and phrases. So these linking words might be small, and that's okay. So it links them to other words in a sentence. 
And usually it acts to connect our people. It connects our objects and time and locations of a sentence. So they're great connector words. And a lot of times they're small, tiny words. Let's look at my example. Elle walked towards the list of law interns for the big case with confidence. Sometimes people struggle with prepositions, and I always flash back to what my sixth grade language arts teacher told me, and she told me that a preposition is anywhere a squirrel can go, which sounds weird, but if you think about it, it makes sense. It can go in something, on something, over something, around something, towards something. These words are prepositions, so if you think about squirrels, it's anywhere a squirrel can go. I hope that helps. It stuck with me. I'm 42 years old and I still remember that example. So maybe it will stick with you as well. Next, we have interjection and I love these because they're very excitable words or phrases and it's words used to express emotion. So we have like, oh wow, I have figured out the case, Elle thought to herself. So oh wow would be our interjection. It'd be like, yay, or oh my gosh. I always think about it like interjection looks like interruption to me. So anytime you want to interrupt somebody with something, when they tell you something exciting and you're like, oh, oh my gosh, that's great news. Yay. Congratulations. These are interjections. And then finally, conjunctions. And conjunctions join words, phrases, or clauses. For our basic conjunctions, I like to think of fanboys to help you remember. And that is just an acronym to help you remember what our conjunctions are. We have for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Those are the fanboys. They're really excited about grammar and parts of speech. So they hang around here and they fanboy it. So these are fanboys and they help you remember what conjunctions are. Let's look at my example. People didn't believe in her, but L worked hard and was successful. So, but and and are the conjunctions here. So, you can see it right here, but and. They're part of our fanboys. In this case, a conjunction is connecting this first clause, which could be a sentence by itself, to the second clause, L worked hard, with the word but. And that word is also a conjunction. So it's joining things together. If you're a language arts teacher and you would like to download this lesson with the activities with other grammar, great grammar lesson and activities, check out ELA Unlimited. It's the hub for creative, engaging language arts lesson plans and resources for your middle school classroom. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments or email me. And until next time, bye.